for a walk? Let's go for a walk. Musical Instrument Digital Interface, or MIDI for short, is basically a technology that was developed back in the 1980s that allows, and this is very oversimplified, so keep that in mind, but it allows the communication between electronic instruments and other, well, nowadays, computers, basically. So whenever you hear somebody say, oh, I programmed a beat, or I programmed this part, whenever you hear that word thrown around, program, programming, uh, what that really means is you used MIDI tracks. You used MIDI technology to compose or create a musical part. Now what makes MIDI useful is it, it allows you to record virtual instruments, basically instruments that you don't actually physically own or possess and have in a room, yet you're able to still get the sound of and get into your recordings, into your songs and your productions. So for example, this could be like a, a grand piano or, a, or a, some kind of synthesizer or, a, or an orchestra, you know, all these different things. Like who owns an orchestra, right? Like the amount of money you'd have to spend to hire orchestral musicians. Well, they make libraries of sounds that have been pre-recorded for the above mentioned instruments. And this allows you to, through the technology and the magic of MIDI, to trigger these pre-recorded sounds and not just trigger them but actually be able to play with them in a very dynamic and responsive way uh, that allows you to put these sounds in your productions that otherwise you would never have access to. Now to get started with MIDI you don't really need much that's the beauty of it. Um, if you have no MIDI controller whatsoever you can start with just using your computer's keyboard now, I don't recommend this. This isn't the ideal way to do it. But if you have nothing at all and you just want to start using it, uh, you can do that. In fact, you don't even have to use your computer keyboard. Uh, you can just draw with your mouse. That's extremely tedious, and I definitely advise you to stay away from that. But it's possible. Now, a MIDI controller is really nothing more than, uh, in, in today's music technology, a keyboard, basically. So this here is a MIDI keyboard, and as you can see, all it is is just the keys. This is a 49 key MIDI keyboard, and there's a couple of simple controls on the back, on the side here. There's a pitch wheel, a mod wheel, and then buttons to go up and down the octaves because you don't have the full, uh, what is a full keyboard, 88 keys I want to say? And this is 49. So it's about half the size of a full range of pianos, like from... C0, I want to say to like what, C, C6, and everything in between. So a simple keyboard like this is all you need to get started writing MIDI parts using software instruments. Now the cool thing is they make even smaller MIDI keyboards, so if you don't want to buy a 49 key because you got a small space, maybe you got a little small work area in your home studio, uh, not a lot of room on your desk, that's fine. You can get like a little 32 key baby mini keyboard midi keyboard i've got one of those i'm going to show you uh, how that one works as well in fact we're going to be using that today to write some parts let me show you what i'm talking about let's let's dive into what midi is and why it's so powerful and how you can use it to really leverage the power of technology in your productions today orchestra you know all these different things like who owns an orchestra right like the amount of money you'd have to spend to hire orchestral musicians well, they make libraries of sounds that have been pre-recorded for the above mentioned instruments. And this allows you to, through the technology and the magic of MIDI, to trigger these pre-recorded sounds and not just trigger them, but actually be able to play with them in a very dynamic and responsive way uh, that allows you to put these sounds in your productions that otherwise you would never have access to. Now to get started with MIDI, you don't really need much. That's the beauty of it. Um, if you have no MIDI controller whatsoever, you can start with just using your computer's keyboard. Now I don't recommend this. This isn't the ideal way to do it. But if you have nothing at all and you just want to start using it, uh, you can do that. In fact, you don't even have to use your computer keyboard. Uh, you can just draw with your mouse. 
That's extremely tedious, and I definitely advise you to stay away from that, but it's possible. Now, a MIDI controller is really nothing more than, uh, in, in today's music technology, a keyboard, basically. So this here is a MIDI keyboard, and as you can see, all it is is just the keys. This is a 49 key MIDI keyboard, and there's a couple of simple controls on the back, on the side here. There's a pitch wheel, a mod wheel, and then buttons to go up and down the octaves because you don't have the full, uh, what is a full keyboard? 88 keys, I want to say. And this is 49. So it's about half the size of a full range of pianos, like from C0, I want to say, to like, what, C, C6? And everything in between. So a simple keyboard like this is all you need to get started writing MIDI parts using software instruments. Now the cool thing is they make even smaller MIDI keyboards, so if you don't want to buy a 49 key because you got a small space, maybe you got a little small work area in your home studio, uh, not a lot of room on your desk, that's fine. You can get like a little 32 key baby MIDI keyboard. MIDI keyboard. I've got one of those. I'm going to show you uh, how that one works as well. In fact, we're going to be using that today to write some parts. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's, let's dive into what MIDI is and why it's so powerful and how you can use it to really leverage the power of technology in your productions today. Okay, so that little song that you heard playing in the intro was a perfect example of what it is to play a virtual instrument. And I was using my small little MIDI, key MIDI keyboard to play a Rhodes electric piano instrument, very famous classic sounding instrument that's kind of got this uh, funky vibe to it um, and as you could tell I'm a very terrible keys player uh, as I was not playing the notes in time uh, and yeah I just I kind of mess up I have to practice lots of times just to get a take that's even close to close to right and that's why MIDI is so awesome because I'm gonna show you that being a terrible keys player uh, is nothing to discourage you from using virtual instruments because you can edit what you've done after the fact, uh, which is amazing because with audio, there is, to a certain extent, you can manipulate audio and you can cut and paste and move things around, but for the most part, if your performance was really off, the remedy for that is to re-record uh, the part that you played, whereas with MIDI, that's just not necessary. Uh, or even smart, honestly. So uh, I've already got a MIDI track loaded up, but I'm going to show you as if we were starting from scratch. So in Logic, in whatever DAW you're using, don't worry, this isn't like some Logic-specific thing. All DAWs nowadays have audio and MIDI tracks. Those are the two kinds of tracks. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to create a new track. In Logic, what you do is you go up to this track menu, and you go to New Software Instrument. Uh, there's a keyboard shortcut for it because I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts. You do Command Option N. Okay, so just for your reference. And then it's going to pull up a new track. If you use the keyboard shortcut, it asks you though. It pulls down this menu. And then if you want really quickly, it, this is an entire list of all of the software instruments that are loaded on my system. So all of these are, uh, actually all of this is like the stock stuff that comes with Logic. So cool stuff, P3 Oregon, Electric Piano. So they even have their own roads. Um, why don't we load that up? By the way, um, before I move on, uh, if you go to AU Instruments, Audio Units, this is where you'll see, this is all of the third party, with the exception of this Apple here. This is all of the third party uh virtual instruments that you have from other companies that you've downloaded onto your system. So for example, I love XLN Audio Addictive Keys. I absolutely love it and that's what I use to play this. But let's go ahead and pull up Vintage Electric Piano in stereo. Create. And we don't need this track anymore. So let's get, get go ahead and get rid of that. And so here's what we're going to do. I'll call this Apple Roads. Now we've created 
our MIDI track and as you'll see here the MIDI information from my original performance is here here's the cool thing I can drag this this is now a MIDI file basically these are notes so I double click these are notes on a grid so if I zoom in a little bit you'll see here that as I click and highlight each one of these is is notes on this grid it's almost like a mathematical thing because based on the beats per minute which it just so happens the song is at 75 beats per minute this grid is subdivided into a certain amount of uh, parts per 16th I think so let's see if we count them one one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's right. So there's 16. It's a, it's divided into 16 subdivisions here. And the more you zoom in, the it just breaks down uh, even more uh, pretty much. Uh, well, it looks like logic is basically giving you uh, down to 16, uh, which is still pretty pretty darn exact. So what you'll see here on this grid is that uh, some of these notes are off. They're, you, you actually can visually see how timing-wise they were off. So right on this line here is when the chord change was supposed to happen. And look, this one was hit a little bit early, right over the line. And then some of them you'll probably see were a bit late, I would imagine. Yeah, like this is slightly behind, that's slightly behind. Sometimes you can just tell visually like if the note was really close to one of these markers and it's just a little bit before or a little bit behind, you can tell, okay, that's where it was supposed to be. Now, there's two ways you can go about editing this after the fact. You can very laboriously and tediously go through each section and with your mouse just click and drag one at a time like this until it snaps into place like it was meant to be all along and this one is still not perfectly on there we go there we go that one just looks like it isn't There we go. So now the first chord is perfectly in time. Watch this. Okay. So you could do that one by one, or you could sort of, to take it up a notch, you can click and drag and select the notes that are slightly off. This one was pretty much there, but I'm gonna leave it alone, and you can drag them as a group. But the problem with that is that all we did was move them back from their position. So now this one's on, this one's just about on, and this one is, well, it's still back a little bit. So that didn't really fully address that uh, as this one is. So now that chord is perfectly on. Another thing that you can do and this doesn't always work perfectly, um, but there's something called quantize, quantization. Now what this does is it takes, based on a note value that you use as an input here basically, and clearly there's a lot of choices. Um, you tell it, hey, I would like to take those notes that were played that were not, uh, straight dead on right on the grid on the spot that they were supposed to happen they were too late or too early and I want them to be time adjusted so that they are now perfectly on so we've already edited these first two chords so what we'll do to demonstrate this is click and drag and we're going to highlight the rest of this all of it so this is kind of a batch way to process let's do uh 
well, these were kind of like, I don't know, quarter notes. And now it just dragged everything and put it in place for us. Let's see how it sounds. I'm going to start from here. That was not it, was it? So let's hit Command-Z to undo, because here's the original performance. Okay, so you can sort of hear what I'm going for, but I'm just playing very sloppy, right? So let's quantize this one with quarter notes, and then let's, while we're at it, let's quantize just the low notes, not including these because there's a change in the middle of the measure here. And we'll go whole notes, make sure those are on. This one can be, I don't know, half note? Well, that's going to change it. Let's listen to that. Okay, I think that was pretty much what we wanted. And then this one is on. Now, here's another thing to note that basically the way that these notes work. Actually, let's finish our quantization first. And then I'm going to point out to you what's going on here, why that sounds a little bit funky. Now we can click and drag all of this. And we can quantize. I think we're going to go with eighth notes. And let's see what that sounds like. Nope, that's not it. What if we swing it? Like crazy, we'll exaggerate it. Nope, that's not it. So let's go to... Hmm, eighth swing? I'm experimenting. Not it. If we go off, let's make sure we still have our original. Yep. Triplet. Okay, so now we're closer to cleaning up this mini performance. Here's the thing about quantization. It's not perfect, as you can tell. Um, the computer is using mathematical values that you're in inputting into it here to basically spit out something that's approximating what it thinks you were meaning to play by locking it to a certain point on this, this grid. But sometimes you're trying to play something that's not something that can be mathematically pinpointed, uh, or at least not so easily. Like you'd have to really have something super extremely precise. So in this case, now that we've gotten closer, we can sort of start to fine tune it. So let's zoom in. Let's take a look. Okay, so measure by measure. This one, by the way, handy tip. Uh, your DAW should have this somewhere. Uh, this button over here, I believe, collapse mode. This makes it so now it's only showing notes on the grid that we're currently working with as far as notes that were played as opposed to the entire range spectrum of notes that are possible. Um, but that's something that's possible to do to show you that you can quickly like change keys if you wanted to. So Let's take a look at this again. Not that. Okay, I like how that first little grouping of notes happens. Mm -hmm. 
which tells me this one is kind of coming a bit early, isn't it? Let's see. Oh, this one's early. That's throwing it off. Okay. And then so let's hear that. Okay, so dun, dun. something's a little weird about that. Okay, well, here's an opportunity to show you what I mean here. The length of the note, how long it lasts and sustains for, is determined by basically literally the length of the tail of this note on the grid. So let's skip ahead and let me show you. So literally, these are like the bass notes that were played here. Listen to this. The reason like right here, dum, you got that clashing sound happening is because this note is still sustained and being playing while this one is playing. So to address that, just click and drag and make it so that they're not overlapping. So that uh, when you have notes overlapping like that, that's referred to in music as legato. Uh, that's an articulation, a way of playing where notes are sustaining over each other, like kind of bleeding into one another. Quick music theory tip. Sometimes that sounds good, especially with big held out chords on like piano. But in this instance, it needs to be a little bit more tight. So problem solved, right? Okay. So I think that's what's happening here, and that's why it's sounding a bit funky. Is this note is being held out too long, and it's starting to clash with this note here. So let's see if that made it better. Sonically, yes. Timing-wise, this is still not sounding right to me. And I'm not quite sure why yet. So we are investigating. I wish my grid was a little bit more precise. Let's see if I can change that. Okay, so unfortunately Logic doesn't give me the ability to split this MIDI grid down into like 30 seconds or even 60 fourths. So I'm just going to have to work with the 16ths because the reason it's problematic for me is because I see in between this bar and this bar, uh, this is kind of arbitrary to me. Like it's it's freehanding it instead of having like a line that I know I could snap it to. So let's hear what we have. This feels like it's happening too late. So this first one, you know what? Let me teach you a trick right now. When you feel like you have a set of notes that you like, you can highlight those. You can either right click to copy or Command C. And you can just cut, delete these. And just move your playhead marker and copy them in. Oh, okay, I see. Even that's a little bit late. Almost like it needs to be there. I think that was our issue, guys. Well, that was our issue, my friend. Okay. So you get the idea uh, that editing the MIDI can be Super tedious. Uh, quantization is something that can help you. Uh, a, a common critique of quantization is that it, it makes music 
sound very robotic uh, and not as human sounding because you have everything snapped to a particular line and it's like mathematically perfect. Um, but I, I think that, you know, if you're a bad keys player like me, uh, you'd rather hear it robotically than the way I played it because the way I played it is just so off. It doesn't even sound musical. <laughs> So quantization is a way to get you started. Again, it's not going to be perfect, but maybe there is a setting here that would make it better. Like you could just play around with it. One thirty second. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> Okay, I'm impressed how, how this measure turned out. Uh, how about 164th? Wow. Oh, got a bad note. Let's cut that. See, that's what's great with MIDI. You played a bad note, no problem. You can just single it out and cut it out. This measure was a freaking mess. Let's cut the whole thing out and let's replace it with the good measure. It's so tweakable. If, uh, if I can get it on the right starting position, that is. <laughs> Which is what was it there? Let's see. That's pretty damn close. Okay, so here's how you take a very mediocre performance and in just a minute or two start to touch it up to get it more polished. Um, now, if I was really going to hardcore edit this, I would spend more time touching it up and making it sound uh, more polished in terms of the performance of it. Uh, another thing I want to tell you about each one of these notes, the loudness of it is controlled by a parameter called velocity. And visually you see this represented with each note having like these little lines, these like tick lines, I guess you could say. If you'll notice, some of them are higher than others. Like this one's quite low. And that represents the velocity. So velocity in this case really just means volume. So if you wanted to turn the volume up or down of a note, you'd go here. And in Logic, it's right here on this thing called velocity. 127 is the maximum value. For some reason, that's what they decided it to be. Listen. <laughs> Uh, it's the cool thing about it is it's not just like it makes it louder. Uh, virtual instruments are mapped out to be responsive to the dynamics that you as the player play it at. So when you turn up the velocity, it's not just like the note is louder now. It's also that the virtual player who played the Rhodes piano is now striking that key harder, which creates a more aggressive sound. So... Just another thing to keep in mind that velocity is a way to kind of impart some humanness and some dynamics into the performance of an otherwise virtual instrument. So very cool stuff. Now here's another really cool thing about MIDI. Since the information is being relayed through these notes on this grid, uh, you can effectively audition as many different instruments playing the, the same notes and just switch out instruments as much as you want uh, so for example and you could do this on the same track you could just change uh, the instrument out swap it out for something different here but if you're wanting to compare it head to head with something else then you're going to want to create a new MIDI track like we did before and 
you can either copy and paste or if you hold the alt option key while you're clicking you can drag it down and drag an entire copy of this so check this out we can solo this track out and let's compare the sound of the addictive keys roads and then the built-in apple roads and see uh what that sounds like just don't even click check all right let's switch over tweak this one at all. Let's see. This is just a preset inside of Addictive Keys, I'll show you. It's called Amp Mix. Let's see what that looks like on the editor. Looks like we've got a microphone on an amp. That's interesting. So if we were comparing these two head to head, I like the Addictive Keys roads. I think it just sounds more real and lifelike. And this one sounds like a little bit more like a cartoon version of it, slightly more. It doesn't sound bad. It just sounds uh, just a little bit less realistic. But in the context of a whole mix, then that might not be the worst thing. Another thing that you can do, this is a, a pretty cool production trick that I like to do sometimes because MIDI notes are just infinitely copyable I'll drag it down into another track like this and then I'll take a whole different uh, virtual instrument so I don't know organ probably wouldn't do it I'll do something that's kind of similar but uh, not not the exact same not the exact opposite something in between so if I was to go to Addictive Keys again, let me find that. Addictive Keys. So for instance, let's say, let's take this uh, Electric Grand. And I don't know, let's pick one of these presets. See, that's what a real keys player sounds like. Sounds good. And I will take the same part played on like a different instrument and I will turn the volume down and then mix it in underneath to create this interesting layering of two different sounds. Check it out. See what I mean? Especially if you take the second one and wash it out with an effect. Let's see what that sounds like with the bass and drums. created more depth by doing that. Just by doing that simple trick of uh, copying it over to a different track, 
picking a different instrument and just to create contrast I crank this effects knob which just basically adds more reverb plate reverb it looks like is what's set up here um, and you've got two different instruments playing the same part exactly the same timing because you're just copying over a file literally and so it's not like you have to play it again um, whereas like a guitar part if you wanted to double your guitars you would first record the first part and then you'd sit and you'd record the second part a second time and you'd be trusting your own timing to be uh, you know playing it uh, with the exact synchronization with the first one now granted with guitar playing uh, the fact that you're not going to play it at the exact same timing is what is what kind of creates the cool doubling effect because they're slightly out of time with each other and that actually does have a cool sound but with this yeah you don't really want that you want just something underneath to like support it um, so sometimes this is a way to do it a second instrument or the other thing you can do is if you wanted to do a sort of uh, now we're delving into like production territory but you guys are one uh, aspiring producer so I want to teach you some ideas so let's let's do this let's delete this track and let's press command D to duplicate and now let's drag this down and now we've got a second track that literally has identical settings as the first one but we're gonna change that we're gonna let's take this one and let's change it to oh, one of these is like big spread out stereo let's see which one it is real stereo listen to this doesn't that sound amazing it sounds amazing oops have to press this to stop it and let's up the reverb to a hall reverb on our internal mixer and let's tuck that in underneath and see what kind of this is just to like now I've got one the first layer is is playing the core part and is sort of the core tone and now this is going to be just like an effect kind of coming in underneath with a different tonal variety just to blend the two together and create a bigger sound when they're together so let's hear what that sounds like doing it as a parallel effect we may as well go all in why not So that's just another fun kind of production idea that you can use once you start getting a little bit more advanced with MIDI I'm kind of just trying to I know this is probably a lot to take in if you've never worked with MIDI before or you're just starting and you 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 know like you're not familiar with it yet because uh, everybody has to start somewhere and several years ago I looked at it and I was like what is this I is like I was like what I, I didn't know that this existed so I'm just exposing you to some potential different ways of thinking around MIDI. Uh, and another thing I want to point out to you, take a look at this. Let me see if you notice something. Okay, did you catch that? I started playback in the middle of these notes here, not at the beginning. And what happened? There was complete silence. Now, I don't know exactly why this is the case, 
I, like I, I can't explain to you why it was set up this way. I don't understand the science behind it, but I just know from experience now, and I learned this in the beginning, that with MIDI tracks, when you start playback at any point, it's not like an audio track or whatever information. Um, I guess I, I could sort of extrapolate the reasoning, but with audio, you have, like we have audio up here. I'll show you. You have information happening at all points. No matter where I drag this playback head, there is something happening inside of the audio track. Whereas the MIDI track, if you start here, then these notes never hit and send signal to run through. It never sends its message to uh, the virtual instrument, which is supposed to be receiving the message from these notes. And therefore, the sound never gets hit. So this means, especially like if you have a synth, uh, it would probably be better if I just showed you an example of this to show you what I'm talking about. So let's go with polyphonic synth. It doesn't really matter what tone it is. This is just to show you the idea, right? Okay, well, we want like a pad. Do we at least have a pad? Yeah, that's not my favorite sound, but... Let's do the, these two notes. Let's go. Two, three, four. That's enough. Got the point across. I press. I have a little modulation button on this mini keyboard. I press it halfway in there. That's what that is, just for fun. But don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, so let's double click on this. Okay, here is our little MIDI editor for this. Looks like I hit it a bit soon, so let me make sure that's on. Check this out. Okay. Great, so that's playing. Again, that, let, let's not worry too much about the sound. I know it's not; it, it doesn't really fit with the vibe of the, the track that's happening, and that's okay. But, so, if I wanted to sustain this pad just for the whole duration of what we have here so far, well, if I were to play back from the very beginning, I will have that. But if I wanted to play back from here because there was a certain part I want to listen to, well nothing why because the note started all the way back here and if I don't start playback from here then I'm gonna get nothing so this is probably one of the few downsides that I've experienced with MIDI and here's my suggestion to you to alleviate this or to get around this you can take a MIDI track and you can bounce it down to audio you can convert it into an audio track um, this is also just good to do if you ever plan on sharing a session with somebody uh, and they open it, they might not have the same virtual instrument you do. So they'll have this MIDI file here, but if they don't have the same virtual instrument as you, they're not going to hear the same sound that, that you heard. So what you can do to remedy this, and what I tend to think you should do, this is my suggestion, before you just convert this to audio, make a copy like we did copy it down so that way if you decide that you wanted to make some changes to the actual notes the performance of it you can edit it later and you can either mute this track or you can just turn it off and that would be control M in logic I said control M there we go mutes that track and now what we can do and different DAWs are different so uh, just Google whatever DAW you're in. If you're not in Logic, if you're in Ableton, like I also use Ableton, you can right-click on a track, and there'll be a button that's uh, a menu. In, uh, in the drop-down, there'll be something that says Freeze. Click on Freeze. It's going to process everything that's on that track, uh, and then it's going to be like a blue color where the track's frozen. Then right-click again 
and click on flatten and then that's going to flatten it down into audio so that's ableton but otherwise for your daw i don't know how every single daw works but just google how to convert audio on a midi track into audio in you know whatever daw you're using fl studio uh, cubase pro tools whatever it may be but in logic here's what you do right click bounce in place and then you know you'll have an option to rename it I don't know why it does bips it's just file name I guess uh, destination new track perfect okay and oh yeah that's right I forgot about that that uh, logic actually as a courtesy puts it on a new track and leaves the old one there for you so I didn't even have to do that and then look at this now it's an audio form so no matter where I start playback from, I get the full benefits. Now that we're in the world of audio, it's sort of like you committed to the sound, and it is what it is now. There's no more editing from the virtual instrument standpoint. Uh, so just keep that in mind, you know, and, and, and production is all about commitment. You got to find sounds that you like and that fit the, the vibe of the track and commit to them but you can sort of leave yourself the room to make an adjustment later if you need to uh, especially with chords or like if there's certain notes where you're like uh, I don't know I kind of want to change the melody or something like that well you can go back into the original MIDI data and change that and then the last thing I want to tell you about is it's really cool with MIDI like you can export this this MIDI stem like I can export this individual audio track right here and that and call that a stem. Well, MIDI is not really any different. Like you can export a MIDI file. Like if you if somebody let's say you had a performance that you really liked in terms of a part or a chord progression or something that you really liked, you can take this file. Again, every DAW is slightly different, but this is just a basic export feature. And I go to export one region as audio file selection as MIDI file this is what I'm gonna do I could put this on my desktop I guess if I wanted to and you can export this MIDI file and then later on in the future you can drag it drag in the MIDI file onto a MIDI track and then load whatever virtual instrument you want to go with it um, especially handy if you wanted to give chord progressions to somebody else just through a MIDI file. Um, so that's basically the general breakdown of MIDI. Uh, that is not everything. That wasn't necessarily an exhaustive list about everything, but that's just kind of a basic crash course on getting started working with MIDI instruments and all the different possibilities. You know, we went over the grid the dragging of the notes, uh, snapping them to the grid with quantization, or um, just freehanding it, copying and pasting notes, the velocities of these notes, and how the velocity affects the dynamics of the instrument that was played. Um, velo higher velocity means it's not just louder, but hit harder, uh, struck harder, you know, whatever you want to call it. And then lighter touch, the more the velocity goes down. And we talked about some production ideas where you can copy the same instrument or something slightly different and copy the MIDI file over and create a slightly different sound and then tuck it in underneath is like a that's called parallel processing because uh, it's st uh, standing right beside it in a parallel fashion and that's just a cool way to like kind of make one performance sound bigger by supplementing it with other sounds kind of uh, next to it tucked underneath uh, creates more depth it can create more depth anyway um, but you know play around with it be experimental and then you know we talked about how once you have a certain MIDI performance that you like uh, and you know this pad is an example of that you can bounce in place and now I've got the audio of this entire pad from any point of playback. So if you've got a pad or any MIDI part really played with a virtual instrument, 
you can convert that thing down to audio and then you're working in the realm of audio so which the the approach to working with audio of course is different and then we also talked about how you can preserve MIDI files and you can export them and use them later if you had a chord progression that you liked a part that you liked uh, you know if you want to just drag it in and kind of start with it and then tweak it around it's whatever you want it to be so those are kind of the basics a crash course on MIDI super duper powerful for you in the home studio uh, because you don't have access I, I, I feel pretty confident in saying that you don't have access to every single instrument, right? You probably don't own a Rhodes piano. You probably don't own a grand piano. Um, that vintage electric grand I was showing you. Uh, orchestral instruments, which we didn't even touch that. Um, but, you know, if you have... I, everyone has... Uh, every DAW has some kind of strings in it. Uh, so, for example... You know, check this out really quick. Wow, that is cool. I'm guessing you don't have violins either, right? So this just gives you a way to access more instruments and you know perhaps one of the trade-offs is that it's it may be difficult for you to quote unquote program parts that sound realistic for the given instrument that we're trying to play and therein lies the you know the 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 catch or the the essence the goal of what being a good producer is all about it's like understanding the role of every single instrument that you're going to that you're ever intending on using in a song and using it the way that that instrument is supposed to sound like if a really talented violin player was to play a, a song a part on your song and you don't have access to a violin player well you need to be able to write a part that mimics as closely as possible what a talented violin player is going to do uh, if you're working on your own stuff in the home studio you're going to need to learn that so but I don't say that to make you feel daunted or overwhelmed I'm just letting you know uh, that virtual instruments gives us the tools to do it uh, the rest of it is going to obviously be up to us to uh, understand what these instruments are meant to sound like uh, what kind of parts they're meant to play what makes them sound realistic and and compelling for the given song that we're writing, you know, the genre that we're in and all that good stuff. So uh, I hope that was helpful for you guys. And of course, you know, if you have any questions, I'm sure this probably raised some questions for you. Let me know. You know, you can always leave a comment uh, on YouTube here in the comment section and, uh, I'd be happy to, to respond to you and we can start a dialogue and go from there. All right. So I know that that was probably a lot to take in for you. If you've never worked with MIDI before, or you're just getting started that that was uh, kind of a lot. Uh, that was basically a crash course. Um, just giving you the basics of kind of, uh, you know, how MIDI works and there's a lot to it. I'm not going to dispute that, but uh, you know, I would encourage you to just, view this video a few times if you need to refresh your memory uh, but the best thing that's going to work is for you to just start practicing so open up your DAW whether it's Logic, Ableton, Pro Tools, doesn't matter all these DAWs can do MIDI stuff open it up and load up a MIDI track and just use the stock instruments and just start playing around with it start you know hitting away at those keys on your MIDI keyboard and see what happens you know once you generate some notes on that grid, go ahead and start playing around with the velocities of them, drag them around to play with the timing, quantize, don't quantize. I mean, just try everything so that you can start to get a, a good grasp and a good feel for how these MIDI instruments and how this programming works. 
once you do start to get a hang of how these MIDI instruments work, you're going to find that uh, you've really unlocked a really powerful key for your home studio and your productions because this stuff can be applied on so many different instruments and you'll be able to start writing and composing music in like multiple genres because now you can use all these different kinds of instruments instead of just the physical instruments that you have. So thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate you having you as a viewer. I hope that was helpful. And if it was, I would just ask of you to uh, go ahead and help me out by leaving a thumbs up on that button down below and subscribe to the channel. Uh, subscriptions really help and uh, helps get the, the message out there to more people. Question for you, you know, what, what, what did you find was the, the biggest takeaway for you from this video? What was the biggest thing that you learned about uh, producing with MIDI instruments that you feel like is the, gonna be the biggest breakthrough for you moving forward in your producing journey? Uh, I would like to know about it, so that way, you know, we could start a little chat there um, learning work with MIDI instruments was a big breakthrough for me, I know. So um, that would be awesome to hear from you on that. The last thing I want to tell you is I do have some production goodies for you that are right. Uh, the link will be in the description underneath, you know, as, as uh, we all like to say nowadays. And that's just going to give you some awesome stuff to get you... Uh, I'm all about helping you get started making music today. I don't want to wait till tomorrow, till next week. We want stuff that can really give you an injection and get you started working quickly. Uh, and so what I have to give you are some package of samples that I've created, some different loops, and just like you see uh, in Logic with the loops library, um, I've got some that I made that are just for you. They come organized by key, basically, so, and, they're, and they're all marked with tempo, so you know exactly what tempo to set your DAW to if you're going to use it. I've tried to make this as easy as I possibly could for you. Uh, so all you got to do is sign up and you're going to get those. And you'll also get access to a four-part workshop that I filmed that shows you exactly how to use these samples to create a song from scratch, literally using nothing but samples. It's totally possible. And uh, I've also got a free PDF as well that tells you the five stages of music production, what every song goes through as I see it. Um, uh, along the way from being nothing but just a little idea all the way to finished product. So all you got to do is click the link in the description and you'll have the chance to sign up to claim those goodies. So uh, thank you guys. Really appreciate you and I hope to catch you on the next video. So next time.